Hello and welcome to another A-Level Economics video with me Mr Goff for MrGoff.com. This video will focus on indirect taxes and subsidies. Indirect taxes are taxes levied on spending. In the UK, the biggest indirect taxes are VAT and excise duties which are levied on imported goods. A specific tax, sometimes called a unit tax, is levied based on the quantity bought, not the value of the product. For example, alcohol duty is charged per litre of pure alcohol, not based on the price of the actual alcohol itself. An ad valorem tax is one levied as a percentage of the tax base. For example, VAT is charged at 20% on the price of purchases. Therefore, we can see that a bottle of wine with a pre-tax price of £10 pays the same amount of duty as a bottle of wine with a pre-tax price of £50. However, the VAT applied to the £10 bottle of wine would be significantly less than that applied to the £50 bottle of wine. A subsidy is money given by the government to encourage the production or consumption of a good or service. The government may give money to consumers to make purchases of goods cheaper, for example, grants for solar panels. Alternatively, they may give money to producers to make domestic industries more competitive internationally. The UK government gives a lot of money to support the automotive industry in order to protect the jobs in that industry. The incidence of tax refers to the degree to which the tax burden falls on the consumer and not the producer. The consumer burden represents the increase in the market price of a good or service after a tax is imposed. The producer burden represents the decreased revenue after paying the tax. The consumer burden can be seen below shaded in blue and the producer burden shaded in red. Let's take a look at an example of the incidence of a specific tax. A soft drink manufacturer as the supply and demand figures shown below. The government implements a specific tax of 30 pence on each soft drink. This means that firms will want to make 30 pence more to supply the same amount as they're currently doing. You can see below that initially we have a quantity supplied and demanded of 80,000 units and an equilibrium price of 80 pence. After the tax is imposed, we see our left shift of supply. This leads to a new equilibrium price of 90 pence and a new equilibrium quantity demanded and supplied of 60,000 units. Although the total tax was 30 pence, we can see that the price has only risen by 10p. This is the consumer tax burden. Therefore, the producer tax burden is the remaining 20 pence. From this information, we can make a number of calculations. The tax revenue will be the 60,000 units that are now sold times by the 30 pence tax for 18,000 pounds. From this, consumers will pay 10p per the 60,000 units, therefore contributing 6,000. Producers will pay 20p, contributing a total of 12,000. Total spending in this area will be reduced from 64,000, which is the 80,000 units initially sold at 80 pence, to 54,000, which is the 60,000 units now sold at 90 pence. And producer revenues fall from 64,000 pounds because now they are only selling 60,000 units and they only retain 60 pence out of that sale. So they're now only making 36,000. Similar effects can be seen with ad valorem taxes, with the key difference being that when we see a left shift of supply, we also see the supply curve gets steeper because at each price, an increasing amount of tax is added. When demand is elastic, the bulk of the tax burden falls on the producer, and when demand is inelastic, the bulk of the tax burden falls on the consumer. When supply is inelastic, the bulk of the tax burden falls on the producer, and when supply is elastic, the bulk of the tax burden falls on the consumer. In the unlikely event that demand is perfectly elastic, 
or supply perfectly inelastic, then the full tax burden will fall upon suppliers. If demand is perfectly inelastic or supply is perfectly elastic, then the full tax burden will fall upon consumers. When the government provides a subsidy, it causes a right shift of supply. As we saw with indirect taxes, the full subsidy is not passed on to the consumer. Below, you can see that the consumer benefit is shown in blue and the producer benefit shown in red. Subsidies aim to reduce the price of goods and the largest reduction will occur when demand is very inelastic or supply is very elastic. If a subsidy were placed on goods with elastic demand or inelastic supply, then the majority of the subsidy would be retained by the producer and not passed on to the consumers. That brings us to the end of this video on indirect taxes and subsidies. Join me in the next video when I'll be taking a look at alternate views of consumer behaviour. Use the resources at mrgoff.com to help you revise economics. And until next time, it's bye for now.